In this video, you will learn how to set up a hybrid meeting in a large room. Hybrid meetings combine in-person and online participants, and the, the larger the room gets, the bigger, you, the bigger challenge you have with audio, making sure that all the participants in the room and online can really hear each other. So we're going to cover three different approaches to managing audio for large rooms, and they will come in at different levels of difficulty and different levels of budget. My name is Marcus Seppala, and I am a hybrid meeting expert. Today's live stream is brought to you by my hybrid meeting course. It's called Master Your Hybrid Meetings. And this is going to be a four hour live teaching course that we're going to do over over two weeks over Zoom. And that means that we're going to be able to interact. We're going to be able to do live demonstrations. Learn more at marcuspresents.com slash hybrid. And that logo also shows you kind of the idea of a hybrid meeting, that it is the merger of the in-person participants and the online participants. So the first solution that we're going to be looking at today is um, using a mixer with a USB connection. And it's going to look something like this. This is the photo version of it. But I want to sh begin by showing you a clip of this particular setup so that you can get a good understanding of how this actually works. Um, so let's play that clip now and I'm going to uh, talk, uh, talk and tell you a little bit about what we're actually seeing. So here we have um, my tech table. Here's the audio mixer that we're going to be talking a little bit more about. Over here is the laptop that is running Zoom. You can see two different uh, components and two different video components on the two cameras. There's one of the cameras that is pointed towards the audience, which is to the right in this frame. And up here, we have a second phone and that is pointed towards the stage. So with this setup, we are actually able to capture and the entire hybrid meeting, uh, hybrid meeting setup that we're uh, that we're going to use, and this example is actually from my comedy club. I'm going to continue. I'm adjusting the camera angle here a little bit so you can see uh, another version of it. So the main components is the audio mixer on the left hand side, and that's going to be able to connect multiple different microphones as well. So that's going to be our first approach is to use an audio mixer. So one version of it is, is what you can see right here. We have the mixer on the left, we have the laptop in the middle. Then to the right, we have a phone, which is uh, pointed towards the audience. And then we have the phone on the top right. Let's actually remove that uh, video there. And then you can see the phone on the top right, uh, which is pointed at the stage. But we're, we're going to focus on the audio specifically. Well, by the way, you can see that this is now running is in our running Zoom. But let's focus on the audio specifically. And let's go over to, to this view. Let's do it like that. So this is actually um, uh, the audio mixer that I'm using. And the beautiful thing with using an audio mixer is that it is easy to manage multiple microphones in the room. Really one of the challenges, really one of the big challenges in a hybrid meeting is to make sure that the speaker and the audience members when necessary can be heard by the online participants and this requires multiple microphones and that's what you can do with a mixer so if you look at the top top left of this mixer there are two microphones connected then if you look at the let's put it uh, let's put it like that then in the kind of center of the mixer there is a white cable and that white cable is um, a USB cable that is connected to the laptop that we saw before. And then you have the two, let's do it like that maybe. Then on the top right of the mixer, those are the two cables that are connected to the speaker system in the room. So with this, you can actually run a hybrid meeting in a really big room and then you can have multiple cameras. And all of them cameras, by the way, should have their audio switched off. But you can really run multiple uh, microphones into this system. So let's have a let's go back to let's go back to this view, and I will I will I will show you another version of this setup, and then we can talk a little bit more about the setup as well. So let's go back to the clip here. I'm going to play you a different clip. Let's deactivate that, and I'm going to show you a, a similar setup here, but this time it's not going to use two phones. Rather, it's going to be used one phone and one camera. Uh, the audio solution is the same, but let's play this clip now. So here we have the mixing console. It's also called a mixing desk or just a mixer connected to this laptop with that USB cable. Then on the right, once again, we're going to have that iPhone, which is pointed at the, at the audience. 
right there on a little tripod. And then we have, as we pan up in this setup, there's going to be a real camera at the top of that um, that column. That is, in, in fact, a Canon M50, and it's pointed at the stage. So we will get a really high-quality video of the stage with this setup, and then we'll get a decent quality video of the audience members, and I think that is the right prioritization as well. So that uh, that's kind of one of one of the approaches that you that you can take, and having having that um, audio mixer is really key. This particular mixer is called the Allen Heath Z10. It can accommodate four different microphones. So you can have one or two on stage, then you can have an audience microphone, uh, and you can have maybe one uh, uh, roaming roving microphone as well. So how does it actually sound? Because so far you haven't heard any sound. You've only heard me when I'm talking into this microphone. So let's listen to a, a short clip that I recorded uh, in the same venue at the end of my comedy show just a couple of days ago. So I'm going to play that clip now, and it's going to be this one. It's just a little demonstration of having two microphones in this setup. Since you have the microphone, why don't you talk, talk about it, Albert? It's your show. Okay. Uh, next Friday we have this place in the harbor. Um, it's it's like a secret bar. It's, um, we have an outdoor show there. Um, it's the next one is on the 10th, the next, and then after that, the 24th. It's like a showcase comedy outdoor show. Really great fun. There we go. As you can hear, both of those microphones, they were actually, both of them were handheld microphones, pretty much like this. Uh, like, pretty much like this. Like, and this is called a dynamic microphone. Now, one of the reasons why this setup works is that this kind of microphone uh, only picks up voices of directly in front of it, right? It's a very, very directional microphone. And the other microphone that we used in that clip that I just played you is also like that. So it was actually placed in the back of the room held, held by a different person. And he was standing maybe seven, 10 meters away from me. So if, you want, if you're gonna be using this kind of setup, you need to have directional microphones like this. But when you do, and you connect them into a mixing desk like this, you're going to have yourself a very nice audio experience. I see that there are some, some questions in the chat, and I'm going to get to them uh, in a little bit. I'm going to finish my presentation, and then I'm going to go through the questions in the chat. I do not have a great ability of, of reading chat and talking at the same time, unfortunately. Um, so direct, and the reason why I, I say that this is uh, this why the reason why this is the first um, solution that I want to present is because it is the best solution. If your venue has a dedicated PA system, a speaker system, and like this, where you can connect microphones, then use it. Right, that's going to give you super high quality, and the output from this mixing desk right here will be seen as just another microphone on your laptop. So you won't have to deal with the, with the potential echoing between the different microphones. The mixer will mix them together and send them to the laptop as one signal. And then the audio out is also going to be sent through this mixing desk because this uh, Allen & Heath Z10 that I'm using here also appears as just a speaker system to the laptop, which means that you can play all the audio out. And that could include um, the audio from your, from your Zoom meeting or Teams or Google Meet, whatever you use. Uh, but it, it can also include the audio uh, from Spotify, for example, if you want to play music uh, in the room. So a really, really powerful solution. And almost all modern mixing desks like this, they do have this USB connection. It, if you have access to it, that is going to be your best solution for large rooms. Now we're going to look at our second solution. Let's look at the second solution. That's going to be, so first we look, so what we looked at in the first solution was a hardware mixer. Next one is going to be a software mixer. And for this one, uh, I'm going to give you an example from a, like a medium-sized room where I actually used also two microphones to capture the, the people in the room. And they are, actually, let's just show you, show it to you. So this setup is, it uses a microphone at the front there. That is a boundary microphone. That's the one on the, on the table. Maybe we can do it like that. Do it like that. And then towards the back of the room, this uh, uses a, um, a conference speakerphone as a microphone and actually also as a speaker. So in here, but here the challenge is we need to mix these two microphones together into one signal. And that's what we're going to be using in software for instead. So this is one view of this setup. Let's go to this next view. Here you can see it as well on the right hand side of the image. There is the conference speakerphone. That is the biodynamic space. And it is in fact, actually let's, uh, before we, before we go into the details, I actually have the biodynamic space right here. It comes in a little pouch like this. 
and um, it is currently my favorite conference speakerphone. Let's open it up. This will do a little live unboxing here. It, uh, it looks like that. That's the biodynamic space. It is a USB and Bluetooth conference speakerphone. And that is actually what we're, what we're seeing here as well on the right-hand side. And then we have the boundary microphone on the, at the end of that cable, at the very far end of this table near the podium. Then we have two cameras, one pointed at the podium. And then at the podium, there's a phone, and that is pointed at the, uh, uh, at the audience so that the audience can also see the rest of the room. So two cameras, two microphones. And this is going to be a challenge. And we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenge. Uh, that... Um, that little tripod there, by the way, let's do it like that. That little tripod there, I have that here in front of me. This is the uh, Manfrotto Pixie, very nice um, little phone tripod. So the challenge here is that we have these two microphones, one for this presenter who is standing at the podium, and then we have the conference speakerphone. Uh, and for this one too, I have a clip. Let's play a little clip. Let's make sure that we have the right clip here for the, for the demonstration. So here's gonna be a live walk around of this setup as well with the two microphones for this medium sized conference room. So we're gonna start at the podium. There's a, a place for your note. That is the boundary microphone. This is the microphone that the speaker is gonna be speaking in, well, not really into, but near. It's gonna be picking up the, the presenter's voice. Here is that phone directed at the audience. It's, uh, it's my Android phone on that Manfrotto Pixie. And you can see in the, in the far wall, on the far wall, there's this um, uh, screen where the projection is shown. That's where the zoom in is gonna be shown. This is the camera, Canon M50, directed at the uh, podium and at the, the speaking area. And here is our biodynamic space, that beautiful, wonderful sounding little uh, round conference speakerphone. I really like that. It's not perfect, but I like it. And here is the laptop. And that laptop is running OBS Studio. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. And uh, let me know in the chat if you're familiar with OBS Studio. And then here is the, the rest of the setup. We have the projector in the, uh, in the, uh, at the end of the room, it, opposite side of the room where the speaker is. So that's our, that's our setup. And the challenge here is that, of course, we have two microphones. And let's do it like that. I'm going to do it like so. Um, and the, the, the one microphone that is, that is being used in that setup was this conference speakerphone. The other microphone, I also have that connected. It is right here. Let's see if I can, un, if I, without tangling myself into everything, let's see if I can actually show this to you. Uh, there it is. Well, can, can we get it to focus? Probably not, though. Okay, well, we couldn't get it to focus, but it's a little, uh, it's a little uh, boundary microphone. And this picks up voices from the front, but not from the back. So picks up voices from the front. Whoever is speaking into it will be picked up, but whoever is speaking behind it will not be picked up. So I'm going to place this on my table here in front of me. It's, a, it's, it's less than one. It's just here, out of frame, but it's on the table. And I'm going to give you a little audio demo. So what you're hearing now is my Samsung Q2U, the one that you're hearing now. I'm going to switch that up. And what you're hearing now is the MXL AC44. That is the boundary microphone that I just held in my hand. And I'm, in fact, using OBS Studio to create this live stream. And in OBS Studio, I can easily switch microphones. Let's switch back to the, to the microphone that you can see. So now we're back to this. But what is cool about OBS Studio, which you cannot really do in Zoom. So in Zoom, you can only pick one microphone at a time. But in OBS Studio, you can have as many microphones as you want. That means you can have them active at the same time. I'm going to do a demonstration for you, which is a very, very limited demonstration, and I will explain why. But I'm going to switch on both microphones at the same time. So now you're only hearing this, Samsung Q2U. And now you are hearing the MXL AC44 as well, the boundary microphone, as well as this. This probably sounds terrible, so let's stop that. And the reason why that sounds terrible is because they are both uh, picking up my voice at approximately the same level. The only way that you can make that not be problematic is by having significant separation between the two microphones, like on this picture. You see that the boundary microphone, the MXL AC44, is all the way at the podium, and then the conference speakerphone is near me. So your challenge, if you want to take this route with, with using a software solution, is to make sure that only one of these microphones is picked up at the same time. And it, it, it is doable if you set it up with the right filters so that if you speak 
so you have to figure out a way that uh, when you're speaking at the podium, it's loud enough for the microphone near to you, but not loud enough for the uh, for the faraway microphone. Same thing with the conference speakerphone. And with the with with this, it's fairly easy to do because it rejects so much of the uh, of the volume that is coming from behind it. But with the conference speakerphone, it is very hard to do because it is designed to uh, to adapt and pick up the voices of everybody who is who's speaking around it. So the, and the solution you can try is a noise gate. So the idea of a noise gate is that um, if the volume, so let's go let's talk about it, let's go back into the full screen and talk about noise gates. So the idea of a noise gate is that if the volume fall, falls below a certain threshold, then it's going to switch off that microphone completely. So the idea is that if you get a very faint signal to the microphone at the podium, but a strong signal to the uh, to the conference speaker phone. Let's say that you're sitting at the laptop and you're speaking. Then that noise gate should be able to uh, prevent any audio from coming through from the microphone at the at the front. So if you want to take this approach, you need to figure out a way so that only one of them um, one of the microphones is actually active at the same time. And noise gates is one way to do it. The other way to do it is to do it manually. Right? So you have the two microphones active, but then you have somebody sitting at the laptop switching off uh, the audience microphone or switching off the podium microphone. That's another approach you can do it. And then for uh, if you're doing this in OBS Studio, that's, that's the software that I'm running on the computer in the, in the photo. That's also the software that I'm using to create this live stream. Uh, you can do that in OBS Studio. And then you can bring the combined audio output, same thing as with the mixing desk, you can bring the combined audio output into your Zoom meeting with something called the OBS uh, virtual. No, it's not the OBS virtual cable. It's the, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a virtual audio cable. And if you if you search on my channel for OBS um, audio to Zoom, you will find a video where I go through one way of doing that. And if you are, if, by the way, if you have bought my uh, OBS for video conferencing course, in that course I go through another more flexible way of doing it as well. That course, by the way, is available at marcuspresents.com/obs. Uh, so that's the second way that that uh, we have been talking about um, for. Uh, for doing audio in large meeting rooms for hybrid meetings. And um, like I said before, I'm going to go through the chat a little bit later on in the in the Q&A session. Because I want to move over to the third uh, method. Uh, and by the way, of course, I, I mentioned the, that OBS course. There's also the hybrid meeting course, which is going to be a live course at marcuspresents.com slash hybrid starting in two weeks. So the third solution is to use a dedicated video conferencing system. And um, uh, this, is, this is at the end of the list because this is the most expensive solution. The idea, my idea here with, the, with the using the mixing desk is that if you're in a room that is big enough to need, to need a mixing desk, there's probably all that infrastructure already on there. But a video conferencing system is going to be a very uh, easy to use system, but it's also the most expensive thing. So what could that be, for example? It could be something like this. This, for example, is the Poly Studio. It is a USB video bar. So and what, there's actually three devices in one. It has a camera, and that camera will automatically zoom in on the person who's speaking. So you don't need multiple cameras with this setup. It also has speakers on the sides, but then it also has six microphones, and those microphones are going to pick up the voices of everybody in the room and it's going to direct the camera towards the person speaking with the help of those microphones uh, and it can look like this this is uh, let's put that full screen so this is an example of the poly studio in the bottom right hand corner of this image in a in a hybrid meeting in that meeting room that we looked at before so there's no, we don't need, there is, there is actually an additional camera in this setup just to sh for showing the audience, um, but whoever is speaking will be picked up by that. And there's a link to it below, um, below in the video description as well. This is called the Poly Studio. It's, the, the price is usually around $800. If you have an even bigger meeting room, then you need an even bigger video conferencing system. And there's also a link to the Poly Studio E70, which is a, a few thousand dollars. So having a dedicated video conferencing 
studio or a setup like this can be a solution if you're, for example, in a corporate environment where, where you have the budget for that. Uh, the benefit of doing that is that it's really all in one. You have your camera, you have microphones and your speakers all in one system. And you hook that up to a TV and, and you're good to go. So you don't have to spend any time setting it up. That's going to be super valuable. And But the, the bigger your room is, the, the more uh, the more powerful uh, video conferencing system do you actually need. Like the Poly Studio here that we use, the Poly Studio USB video bar, this works for this size room, but not really any bigger. And the, like I said, there's links to uh, to all these products in the video description as well. Another thing where, where we have links in the video description is to my hybrid meeting course. This course is called Master Your Hybrid Meetings, and I'm going to start teaching it live in two weeks. You can sign up at marcuspresents.com slash hybrid. Uh, and in this, it's going to be four hours of content at a minimum. And we're going to cover uh, the basic technical requirements for any hybrid meetings. Uh, we're going to cover solutions for different situations, such as large rooms, uh, or if you're, do, if you're facing background noise, or if you're facing distractions. Uh, one of the most typical distractions is uh, audio feedback. We're going to cover that as well. But then we're also going to cover things like how do you make sure that your hybrid meetings actually do feel inclusive for everybody and a lot more. I'm going to have charts and graphs and lots of helpful material. But, but because this is a live teaching course, you can also ask questions live on a Zoom call. So this is not a live stream uh, like we're doing today. Today you, you can ask questions in the chat. But in the course, we're all going to be on Zoom and we're going to be able to demonstrate some of these things live. So for example, if you... Uh, if you ever want to see OBS in action, how we can actually make make things use uh, of things like that, we can do that live on the on the Zoom call. So you can sign up for that at marcuspresents.com slash hybrid. Listen, let's do a bonus tip. I have a bonus tip for you as well. Well, th that that ruined the great reveal. Okay, let, let's let's pretend that I didn't actually show you the slide yet. So here's one of the problems. Um, here's one of the problems. If you're standing here at the at the podium in our hybrid meeting. You see the projector screen over there at the other end of the screen. And that distance is, is approximately five, six meters to that, to that projector screen from, from the podium. Um, that's like 15, 20 feet, right? At least when I'm standing at the podium, I cannot read what's on the screen. I can kind of see that there's some faces on there when, when there's other people in a Zoom meeting, but I cannot really see who's on there. And anybody with any kind of vision impairment is going to have the same problem. And I think even if you have good eyesight, you will struggle to read uh, at that distance. So I have a power tip for you. And it is, in fact, to handhold a phone. So this is a little bonus tip. Uh, because what I usually do when I'm standing here is that I log in with my phone to, the, to that same Zoom meeting. And then I can see a list of the participants there in front of me by clicking on the list of participants. And then I don't have to kind of guess or ask who's there because I can't see them. I can just handhold my phone and be a part of that same meeting. What is important to remember is to disconnect the audio. Uh, but that handheld phone is really good. The other value of having a handheld phone is that uh, I can also use it to demonstrate things. And this is usually what I, what I do at the beginning of my hybrid meetings. I grab my phone and I show them the setup because people want to know what kind of setup are we using today? Are we going to use the um, my, my cheap webcam or are we going to use the nice camera? Uh, what kind of new technology have I brought to the phone? So handheld hand holding the phone is actually quite valuable. By the way, there's, there's something that, uh, that I definitely forgot to mention. I mentioned some of the gear that we've been using here, um, but there is one piece of equipment that I want to show you as well. Remember this from the, from the first one? This was the, the, the view from my comedy club. You see that there's a, there's a uh, thing holding up the phone there on the right, and that thing, actually, this desk clamp right here. Let's see, can we fit it into the frame? There we go. So the way it works is that this, this clamps onto a desk, and then you can mount a camera or a phone. Actually, you can take the phone clamp off of this, for example, and you can mount it on there. And this is the small rig, uh, small rig selection desk clamp. This thing right here, $20 approximately, an incredibly useful piece of equipment for hybrid meetings because you don't need a lot of space like a tripod. You can just clamp this onto the desk, and then this extends... Can we demonstrate this? Live demonstrations never work, right? So we can unscrew both of these, and then this actually extends quite a lot, as you can see here, right? 
So a very useful piece of equipment is that small rig desk clamp. Where were we? All right. So we talked about the um, we talked about the, the three different solutions here. I'm going to take your questions in, in just a moment. Uh, but if you want to uh, watch another video about hybrid beings, I recommend the one that I have on the screen right now. This one is about different kinds of cameras for hybrid meetings. Because today we talked a lot about audio. But there's five different ways that you can set up cameras in your hybrid meeting. So click or tap the screen right here to watch that video. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. So now let's take some questions from our audience members. This always takes me a little bit of time to set up this so that I can actually see the chat. Just bear with me here, please. I'm going to break out the going to click out, pop out chat right here. And then I need to zoom in a little bit. Let's get rid of that poll. Poll results are in. Most people have, um, yeah, look at that. Most people have between 11 and 25 um, people in the room. And that's cool. And then we have a lot of people with more than 50 people. And, if, and I think for anybody who has more than 50, um, you definitely need to leverage the sound system in the room uh, by using probably multiple microphones as well. Especially if you want the audience members to be able to say something. Um, uh, and, and you might need a wireless microphone. You need, might need a wired microphone. The space, by the way, that I looked at before that I showed you. Um, let's see if we can go back to that. Um, the space here where I, where I um, run my comedy shows, that can fit about, about 50 people uh, sitting comfortably, about 80 people sitting a little bit less comfortable. No, actually, no. It's still at 80. It's pretty comfortable, actually. Uh, so that's the kind of room that I, uh, I'm also able to run these hybrid meetings in. Okay, let's go to the, let's go to the chat. I'm just going to scroll down here and get rid of that poll. And uh, now let's see what we have. Just, just going to take one moment. All right. Actually, maybe we can even let's end the poll there. All right. Okay. I just. All right. All right. Cool. We have um, people joining from Bronx. Excellent. From Johannesburg, South Africa. Excellent. Actually, the um, uh, Patricia. I'm happy that you're from that you're from Joburg. Um, remember that clip that I, where I played the guy advertising the outdoor comedy show. His his name is actually Albert Lowe. He is from Johannesburg. He is one of our favorite comedians here in Basel, Switzerland, and he has taught me a lot about South Africa. Uh, I'm sure it's all very very true. Uh, Phil in the house, very happy. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, one question is, uh, curious on your thoughts about the Rodecaster Pro as an audio interface. Yeah, people definitely like the Rodecaster Pro. It's, uh, it's uh, like many of my favorite streamers use the Rodecaster. Um, definitely high quality product. We have Long Island, New York. We have more from New York. I like that. I like that. I miss New York. I, I love doing comedy in New York. Uh, it is the hardest place to do comedy. I've uh, I've been on two trips to do comedy in New York. I, I was just in Chicago a couple of in May. I was in in Chicago doing uh, doing stand up comedy, and um, the trip before that in 2019, I was in both New York and Chicago. Excellent, excellent comedy cities, but New York is hard. It is. <laughs> I like. I'm really starting to understand this. If if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. It is. Anyway, I'm talking about other things. Uh, let's see. Jennifer is asking, trying to set up hybrid meetings uh, in in a backyard live and on Zoom. What should I be concerned about outside? Well, uh, outside, definitely uh, the weather is going to be a challenge. If you have some kind of canopy, that's going to help. Uh, one thing that you don't have to worry about when you're when you're doing outside is echo. Uh, really, one of the big challenges for for audio inside is echo, and I actually have a lot of echo in my space where I'm where I'm doing this live stream. I have a lot of hard walls around me. I'm using a no I'm using two solutions for that. One is that I have a very directional microphone, and the other one is that I'm using a noise suppression. If I did not do that, there would be a lot of echo that you would be able to hear. Hey, you might have actually heard that on the other microphone. Uh, 
Uh, but so um, outdoor is, and but that also means that uh, your voice is not going to be so easily heard. Like when you're inside, because you have echo, you don't have to have a huge amount of ampli amplification. Outdoor, you definitely need to have a lot more amplification. Outdoor, you may have, may or may not have access to to uh, continuous power. That's going to be a challenge. Make sure that you have that. Don't run your show on batteries. Um, but if you can figure out how to do it indoors, it's, it's going to be quite, uh, I think it's going to be quite uh, similar as well. Another, by the, mm, another thing that you, which is not audio related, but another challenge is going to be lighting. Uh, I've, I've produced outdoor comedy shows myself and uh, perform, both produced and, and, and performed outdoor comedy shows. And the lighting was, for me, the biggest challenge, especially when the lighting changes. Because our shows would usually start at 7 or 8 p.m. And the fact that the lighting changes, that means that I have to go and change the settings of my camera or bring uh, external um, illumination, what is external lighting. Um, that, that, that would be my uh, main concern. Audio is probably more easy. If, you, if you're in a space where we don't have a lot of like traffic noise or anything like that. Let's have a look here. And Jennifer is asking, also, what should be, um, what should I be concerned about if someone else is having music or uh, music in another yard? Uh, what equipment do I need? My plans is to use a projector to show the zoom screen. Projector to show the zoom screen uh, can certainly be a good idea, but then it has to be dark. I think you can't, you, with most consumer level proje projectors, you won't be able to use them uh, when uh, when the sun is out, right? So that's going to be a challenge. If other if people are playing uh, music in the yard, that, depending on the microphone you have, that should not be a problem. If you have a microphone like this, this is only going to pick up uh, sounds that are coming directly in front of it. If I have music coming from, from the sides, it's not going to be picked up. Shall we do a demo? Anybody who's seen my live, my live streams before knows that my live demos will always go wrong. So let's try it. So I'm going to try to demonstrate the directionality of this microphone. Pick it out of the mic stand. This is the Samsung Q2U. Uh, so I'm going to. So if I'm if I'm pointing it directly at my mouth, it's going to sound like this. But if I'm pointing it away from my mouth, it's going to sound a lot less. I can see that in my meters. That just because I'm pointing it away from my mouth, it's going to pick up a lot less. And once I'm picking, pointing it out of my mouth, it's going to pick up a lot more again. So if you have a directional microphone like this, like any kind of d dynamic microphone, uh, you uh, will not have to worry about music from the other yard, in principle. Test it first, of course. Well, that should be a fun test, getting people to be noisy around you. All right. So let's see Jennifer's uh, question. The next one here. What equip? Let's see. Put that down a little bit. Uh, what equipment? Um, uh, um, is a, okay, twelve people in a backyard with guest. Oh, with a guest of honor. That's nice. Uh, all other participants will be Zoom. Uh, if you have if you have twelve people in a in a backyard, I think you will need some kind of handheld microphone. Or well, no, it doesn't have to be handheld. But I th I think that you should go for a stationary microphone. Put a microphone like this on a, uh, on a mic stand and then have a place where people go to speak. Because you're going to have outdoor and you cannot rely on kind of the room echoing everything, I think you will need one place where, where the speakers need to go. And you probably won't be able to pick up too much of the, of the audience just because you're outside. You could, of course, have a second microphone, something you know like this pointed at them. But I think your best bet for the highest quality audio will be to just have one stationary microphone where people can go to speak. It doesn't matter so much which kind of microphone it is. I mean, I, I like this one. This is USB and XLR, the Samsung Q2U. But that would be the place to start at least. Uh, because I'm assuming that you, because if it's like an anniversary celebration, you probably won't, hearing the audience probably will be a lower priority than being able to hear the speaker, the presenter, I would assume. All right, let's have a look at Peter's question here. Uh, for the camera phone, is it logged into the host's Zoom account and during the presentation? Are you transmitting in gallery mode um, so that all the cameras are alive? Okay, let's have a look here. So there's two questions there. Let me, let me find my slides first. Oh, okay. it's actually right here. 
So in here, in this example, I yes, there are two phones connected. And yes, uh, in all of my setups, I do log in with all my devices, including the laptop, the phone, and the second phone from the same Zoom account. And that is indeed my host Zoom account, absolutely. And that's why I like Zoom, because you can do this easily in Zoom. I don't know if it's so easy to do in other software. So yes, uh, I am doing that. For the gallery view, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge the question here because you'll say, um, uh, during the presentation, are you transmitting in gallery mode so that all cameras are live? Gallery mode does not impact what you're transmitting. Gallery mode or gallery view only impacts what you as the audience member see. So you, uh, if you're in my Zoom meeting, you can choose speaker mode or gallery mode and every individual can do it and it has no impact on anybody else's setup. Now, all my cameras are live and in that, uh, in that they, are, uh, they are all on. So if you have a look at that, that setup here, they are both on and they are, one of them is pointing at the stage, the other one is pointing at the, uh, at the audience. So they are on, but the individual um, viewer can choose speaker mode or gallery view, or speaker view or gallery view as they choose. Uh, in the room, my rule is, rule is typically this, that if the person speaking is online, then I usually put the room's projector screen in um, speaker speaker view because I want to have the maximum kind of band or not bandwidth but but uh, just visual space for the speaker. If the person speaking is in the room, then I usually have my projector on gallery view so that the person in the room can see as many faces as possible. But remember, speaker view gallery view only impacts what the uh, the viewer sees or the the individual participants. Now, of course, if you have multiple people actually looking at the projector screen, that that's uh, um, indirectly it has an impact as well. All right. Okay, we have uh, Jennifer expecting about 125 people on Zoom. Then uh, one, one thing that you should be aware of, of course, that you need the upgraded Zoom account. I think the, the limit is about 100 for the normal Zoom account. It's one of the corporate ones. I can't remember what it's called, actually. All right, so we have we have Pratika we're joining from Indonesia, and uh, all right, Patricia's saying that is great. That seems to be the end of the questions here. Hey, I'm happy you you were able to join us live for this session, um, and I hope you and I hope you learned something about running hybrid meetings in large rooms. I had a lot of fun, and I hope uh, that you will check out the course, uh, MarcusPresents.com/hybrid. Check out the links in the video description as well. And uh, I want to thank you for participating active. We had uh, we had a lot of fun. Let's see. Shall we have a look at that one? Let's see. Can I find the last question there? Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Speaker. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Right. And okay. So let's have a look at Virginia's question. When the when the it says continue from above, but the message was retract, retracted. So I, let's see, I, don't, I may not have the entire context, but I'm reading the last part there uh, is that the speaker sometimes walks or paces around. Yes, I, I'm very happy you asked that question because, oh, now, now I'm tempted to do a live demo. Hmm. Because my, here, here's my answer. I give you the quick answer and then I'm going to ruin it by, by trying to demonstrate it. The answer is this kind of microphone. So. I'm going to try to not get tangled in my cables. So let's have a look. So this kind of microphone, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I am going to get my thing to focus on it. There we go. All right. So this is the MXL AC44 and it's finally focused. And this kind of microphone is a boundary microphone. And like I, like I mentioned before, it picked, and now the focus is once again completely wrong. I'm not having any luck. Can we get the, there we go. And this kind of microphone will pick up the voices of 180 degrees in front and almost nothing from the back. When you're inside, you're always gonna have some echo, so you will have something coming from the back. But in principle, it's only gonna pick up the voices from, uh, from the front. Uh, so if the person is pacing around, this kind of microphone, a boundary microphone, is a really, really good solution because you can use it at some, uh, some range as well. You don't have to be in, directly in front of it. This kind of microphone, a dynamic microphone, you have to be in front of it. This kind, 
you can definitely use. And one of the great uh, applications for this is if you're doing a lecture, for example, and you're walking at the whiteboard and, and you're walking back and forth, but you're not going behind the microphone, then this kind of microphone is a really good solution. So I'm going to attempt a live demonstration. It's, it's going to go horribly, but let's, let's attempt to do it. But just before, before I do that, uh, note that uh, all of the gear that I'm talking about, you can find that at marcuspresents.com slash gear. And I think there's a link to that MXL AC44 in the video description as well. So I'm gonna let, let's let's do this demonstration. First, I'm gonna try with this one, and I'm just gonna walk around and and go left and right, and you will hear the difference very clearly. So now I'm gonna walk away from my microphone a little bit, and you won't be able to hear me almost anything because I'm already to the side. I'm walking, I'm speaking in the same tone, and then I'm walking to the to the left here on my side. And as soon as I leave the frame you notice that uh, you can hear me a little lower. Now, I'm gonna switch to this one. I'm gonna place it in the same place below my microphone and I'm gonna switch microphones. Now, what you're hearing is the MXL AC44 and I'm gonna once again walk a little bit to the, to the left here and you should be able to hear me almost as strongly as I did before. And then I'm gonna walk, walk past it again. I'm gonna go to the other side and now I'm speaking into it. I'm still within that 180 degree pickup range of the microphone. And you should be able to hear me approximately the same, approximately the same level. Now we're back to this. So if the person is walking back and forth, then definitely a boundary microphone is a really, really good solution. Another solution is, of course, to have a, uh, a, um, a clip-on lavalier mic wireless or wired. The best wireless option is the, uh, the Rode uh, Wireless Go 2. It is a really good, really good model. It's an investment, but um, it, it's a really high quality microphone. You can also get a wired lavalier microphone with like six meters of cable. The Boya BYM1 is what I've used in the past, $15. That's another solution. All right. Now let's go back to. Hey, I'm happy you guys have questions. I'm 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 happy to answer these questions. Okay, let's, I'm going to continue to read Virginia's question here. Um, our organization, uh, an organization uses um, hotel facilities for conferencing, and speaker uh, speakers use a podium. Uh, my dear Mike, podium. Okay. Uh, Mike from also laptop for Zoom trying to have to have, to have a group purchase uh, anchor my speaker. I'm I did not understand that sentence unfortunately. Sorry about that. I'm going to try the next one. Uh, we felt that a lavalier mic um, might help might be helpful because sometimes they won't walk away uh, from the podium mic. Ah, okay. Uh, you're probably writing this on the phone. I think that's there's a little bit of autocorrect happening there, um, but yeah, a, la a lavalier mic can can certainly be a really good asset, wired or wireless. It's going to pick up, um, pick up, regardless of what we are. Okay, so let's ask let's look at Peter's question. So for the remote attendees to see all cameras, all they have to do is uh, is use their gallery view uh, at their end. That is absolutely correct. Yes. That is absolutely correct. All they have to do is pick gallery view, Peter. That, that's uh, definitely how Zoom works. And uh, here's a little power tip. Even if you, as a host, pick to spotlight one of them, which, and spotlight normally forces one person's or several people's um, uh, views to go full screen, they can override that by still clicking on gallery view. So gallery view is always available for them, yeah, unless you're doing like a Zoom webinar or something like that where you really control the view. But in normal Zoom meeting, they can even undo the spotlight by picking gallery view. And they can, and they can also pin, and like if they are not the host, they can also pin an individual video, which will also impact only their view, but nobody else. Uh, by logging in all cameras to the same host account, all cameras' images will be transmitted. Uh, true. Yes, that is correct, Peter. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but that it, it's not essential. Like for me, the reason why I use the same Zoom account to log in uh, with all cameras is because it's easy. 
Because when I look at the list of scheduled meetings, all I have to go to is the list of meetings and then click on start that meeting, even if the meeting is already in progress. So for me, it's just a matter of convenience. I could also log in with separate accounts or I could just log in. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I could log in with, with my account, not as host as well if I wanted to, but I just find it easier to do it. Um, but then once you've done that, you can still turn off individual cameras. So, for example, when, I, when I'm holding, when I'm hand holding my phone when I'm at the podium, I do switch off the camera because I don't need the camera there. So that is, so, so what you're saying is that the, all the cameras uh, will be transmitting, yes, unless you switch them off. That's the, the full answer to your question there. Um, will there be feed, this is Virginia's question, will there be feedback with the lavalier mic and the podium mic at the same time? Uh, in practice, it may, okay, let, let's break this. So. The problem with a uh, the, the the biggest type of audio feedback in a hybrid meeting is when you have I wish I had my graphics loaded up but I don't but the, let me let's try to explain so the biggest problem is if actually let's let's show it on one of these slides let's show it on Let's show it on this slide here, for example. So audio, one type of audio feedback is that I have the two phones, right? I have the phone, the audience camera, and then I have the, uh, the second camera, and then I have the microphone. Now, in order to avoid audio feedback, it is essential that the audio on both of the phones is disconnected. Not only muted, not only turned down, but completely disconnected in Zoom. Otherwise, what's going to happen is that if I speak into the microphone from the stage, the speaker in one of the phones is going to play back that audio and then it's going to be picked up maybe by the microphone in the other phone uh, and potentially even by the microphone on stage. And that's, that's the worst kind of audio feedback. You, you can't have that. So if you're going to be using, uh, so that's, that's the worst kind of feedback when you get it out of the speakers. The other kind of, kind of feedback is when the two microphones are both picking up the same voice. And that is what I, what I demonstrated before. Let me do that again. Now we have both the MXL AC44 and the my, my KNMU working at the same time. And it just sounds bad because they're, they're, they're off sync. So the reason why you need some kind of mixing solution is to avoid that, right? You can have you can have as many microphones connected to this as, as you want, but then it needs to be going as one signal into Zoom. And that's what happens with that USB connection. If, you're, if you have a, 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 um, a podium mic here, let me have a look here. Uh, if you have the lavalier mic and the podium mic, it depends on how you connect them. If you connect them both to a mixing desk, you're okay. Right, and and if I look at if we go back to this example, this kind of mixer has all kinds of different inputs, right? So I'm using the XLR inputs, which is at the top left, but it has a bunch of other inputs here as well. So you can connect, um, you can connect a little 3.5 millimeter uh, uh, lavalier mic there, and you could connect uh, um, the kind of left-right connection or XLR connections in here as well. So this, if you connect it to a mixer mixing desk, you won't have a problem. If you connect it to something like OBS, like I was talking about before, and then you try to software mix it, you will just have to make sure that either there's somebody switching on and off one of them or that you use noise gate so that they're not both picked up at the same time. So I wouldn't say that that's not necessarily feedback. That's more of a kind of a, it sounds like an echo because you have it coming from two different sources at the same time. It's just as annoying, of course, um, but it's, it's going to be a, a challenge. All right. So let's see. Um, Ah, Peter is always using Zoom webinar. Yeah, then then the rules uh, because Zoom webinar doesn't really allow um, allow the uh, um, the audience members to be on camera. Then you don't really have that problem. But of course, if you can log in from the host side and multiple cameras, those should be available uh, just as as normal. All right. Hey, thanks for the questions, guys. So check out the uh, the links in the. Uh, uh, 
in the description and i'm really happy that you were able to join me in live here uh, hit the thumbs up by the way on this video if you're still here hit the thumbs up and and uh, give me a subscribe here on the, on the youtube all right i'm gonna end this stream right now thank you very much for being here and i will see you in the next one